Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at PID control loops. By the end of this video, you're not only going to understand what is a PID controller, but also have a thorough understanding of how the proportional, integral, and derivative all work together to control the output. So what is a PID controller? Put simply, a PID controller is just a type of controller that controls an output to have a process value reach a desired set point. Examples of this could be a cruise control in your vehicle, a temperature control loop, or in a generator, you would have one PID loop to control the voltage of the generator and a second PID loop to control the speed of the engine. Let's give an example. You're driving down the road and you set your cruise control at 100 km an hour. Your set point now becomes 100 km an hour. As you approach a hill, your vehicle slows down to 70 km an hour. So your process value is 70 km an hour for the actual speed of the vehicle. 100 minus 70 is 30. The PID controller looks at the error, or the 30 km an hour, and tries to bring it to zero. It does this by pushing on the gas pedal, or increasing the output, until the process value reaches the desired set point. So let's see a PID controller in action. Today we'll use the PID simulator. It's an app you can find on the Microsoft Store, and it's a great tool to help you learn and practice PIDs at home. So first, set the proportional gain the integral gain and the derivative gain. We'll dive into these a little further in the video. And a set point. When we start, the proportional integral and derivative all work together to control the output to bring the actual value up to our set point. Before we dive into the calculations behind the PID controller, there's a couple of terms that we need to know. PID, as we already discussed, stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. Set point, it's the desired value. If you look at the cruise control example, it would be the set speed for cruise control. Process value is the value we're trying to control. Again, the cruise control scenario, it's the actual speed of the car that we're trying to control. The error is simply just whatever our set point is minus our process value. So, when the vehicle is set to be going 100 kilometers an hour, but it's actually only going 70, 100 minus 70 is an error of 30. Gain. So you just heard me say the proportional gain, integral gain, and derivative gain. The gain is just a multiplication factor used in the calculation of the PID controller. For an example, if the P gain is set to 100, it will have twice the effect, the proportional will have twice the effect on the output of the controller as if the P gain was set to 50. These numbers don't necessarily represent anything, they're a unitless number, and just a gain or a multiplication factor that when increased will have a higher effect on the controller and when decreased will have less of an effect. Another example would be the D gain. So in a PI controller, there is no D, and the D gain would be set to zero. So the D has no effect on the output because anything multiplied by zero is, well, zero. All right, now it's time to take a look at the P, the I, and the D separately to see how each one affects the output of the controller. The proportional value is the first of the three calculations, and it's used to control the output in proportion to whatever the error value is. The proportional will react immediately to the error, and it tries to bring that process value up close to the set. The higher the proportional gain, the faster the reaction of the controller. If we set the proportional too low, the reaction speed of the controller, it might be too slow and the controller might become instable because the I value, which we're going to talk about next, is going to have to do a lot more of the work. If the proportional value is set too high, then the controller might become unstable, it might overshoot the set point and go into an oscillation. Okay, let's see how a proportional value reacts in the real world. First, we'll set our gain to 100, which may be a lower number for a proportional value, and we have our set point. Right now, the actual value is zero, the set point is 1500, so the error is gonna be great at 1500. As the actual value increases, the error becomes less, and the proportional also has less of an effect on the output. Notice the proportional by itself may not, if it's low enough, may not actually be able to bring the process value up to the set point hence why we have a proportional and an integral. Let's see what happens if we set this proportional higher. Notice how too high of a proportional gain, while it will bring the actual value up to the set point, 
also causes the controller to go into oscillations as it has too much of an effect on the output of the controller. A good proportional value for this controller is going to be 350. The immediate reaction is great, bringing that actual value up close to the set point. While it doesn't actually reach the set point, that's what the integral is going to do next. The I, or the integral, is the second calculation in a PID controller that's used to control the output. The I value, or the integral, will continue to accumulate over time until the set point is reached. This is important. As you just seen, the proportional value may not actually reach the set point. So after the initial response from the proportional, the integral continues to compound, bringing that output up and the actual value closer to the set point. So the longer it takes to reach the set point, the more the integral is going to influence the output. If we set the integral value too low, the controller may never actually reach the set point and it might be really slow. If we set it too high, then the controller may overshoot and go into an oscillation. Let's see how the integral value affects a PID controller using our simulator. To start, we'll set a low integral gain. Notice there's no immediate reaction like the proportional, but the integral value continues to compound and accumulate over time to bring that output higher and higher until the actual value reaches the set point. Now this value of two is really low and not practical as it's going to take forever for the process variable or value to reach the set point. On the other end of the spectrum, an integral of 100 may be too high, causing that process value to overshoot the set point and then undershoot and then overshoot, throwing the controller into an oscillation. A good value for this controller is going to be 35. While this still may cause some overshooting if only the integral is used, combined with the proportional, the value of 35 is going to be great in the reaction time of the controller. Remember before when we had just set the proportional to 350? And we had a great immediate reaction, but the actual value never reached the set point? Well, let's see what that does with our new integral value of 35. We have the immediate reaction of the output from the proportional and then the accumulative over time from the integral to bring that actual value. Now for the third and final portion of our PID controller, the D or derivative. The derivative is one of the most misunderstood of the PID controller, but when put simply it is just looking at the ramp rate of the process value and if it sees that it's going to be overshooting then it pulls back on the output to try and prevent that overshoot. If the derivative is set too low, the controller may act normally as you just saw with a PI controller. But if you need a faster reaction from the controller and need to set the P and the I a little higher, you have no way of limiting the overshoot with too low of a D value. If the derivative is set too high, then the controller may become unstable and have an undesired reaction if there's any distortion on the loop that makes it look like the ramp rate is faster than it is. Looking at the derivative in the simulator by itself will have no effect on the output of the controller. Notice we have a set point of 1500, but because there's no ramp rate of the actual value, then the derivative has no effect on the PID controller. But if we put in the values that we had before, P of 350, the I of 35, and the D of 0, while this is a good PI controller, notice there is some slight overshoot over top of that set point. That's where the derivative comes into play. Giving us a derivative of 100, reset this controller. Watch how the derivative pulls back on the output to prevent that actual value from overshooting the set point. Now for the math behind the PID controller. When broken down, is actually quite simple. We'll start by looking at a couple of abbreviations needed. So KP, KI, and KD are just the proportional integral and derivative gains. DT is the difference in time between control cycles. If using a PLC for a PID controller, it would be the PLC cycle time or every 100 milliseconds. We have error, set point, process value, and previous error. The error is simply the set point minus process value. Proportional is just the proportional gain multiplied by the error. Integral is the total integral accumulated over time plus 
integral gain multiplied by error times dt. The derivative is the derivative gain multiplied by the error minus previous error divided by dt, or derivative gain multiplied by the ramp rate. And our output is just proportional plus integral plus derivative. Now that we understand how the proportional, integral, and derivative all work together to control the output, it's time to practice. You can download this simulator from the Microsoft Store and practice at home. With the simulator, there's a ton of advanced options as well. You can change the ramp rate of the set point. You can offset the actual value to see how your PID controller is going to react. Change the PID values on the fly. Change the reaction time of the controller from a fast reaction engine to a slow reacting temperature control loop. Or add random distortion into the loop to simulate real life scenarios. I hope you now have a better understanding of what is a PID controller and how one works. To conclude, PID controllers really are great controllers and when programmed correctly can be very effective in a wide variety of applications. If you want to learn how to set up a PID controller, either from scratch or how to tune one that's already been set up, watch my next video, How to Tune a PID Controller. And again, if you did want to practice at home, you can download the PID simulator used in this video from the Microsoft Store, or I'll add a link to the description section of this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and enjoy automating.